Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program, fuckers. And today I'd like to talk about, is it okay to consolidate? And I was talking to my good friend Greg Kinder yesterday and he was, uh, he was telling me he's actually considering slightly consolidating his collection. And uh, I, I initially said, Greg, I'm not a fan of it. Don't do it. I've done it myself and I regretted it. However, hear me out, fuckers. Hear me out. He said what he wants to do is concentrate on having three really cool, iconic pieces. Now, let, let's have a look at the, the Gregory Kinder collection. So we've got a, uh, a Quartz Omega Seamaster. We've got a manual wind Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon. We've got a Rolex Explorer 2 white dial. We've got a Rolex Submariner no date in steel. And we've got a Datejust white dial. And uh, there's also another Seamaster Quartz there. So six sort of uh, the, the, the better piece, six better pieces. And he wants to turn that into three pieces. And so he was basically looking at getting rid of the two Quartz Seamasters. One of them, I think he's going to do really well. He bought it brand new for about the $1,700 mark. I think he'll get his money back. This is the Omega Speedmaster James Bond. He's also got a, uh, an, a 90s Omega Seamaster quartz which he's just had a $400 repair done on it so it is absolutely perfect I think that's that's got legs uh, so that's two pieces and he's also what he was looking at getting rid of was the Rolex Explorer 2 he's thinking about selling it back to me and selling the date just so he's going to be left with the Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon, the Rolex No Date Sub, and he's going to use the money, four watches sold, he's going to use that money, put a little bit in as well, and get a rose gold Jager La Coltra, or to quote my good friend Irex Guy, JJ La Coultra, JJ La Coultra. Uh, he's going to get a Jager La Coultra, duo ultra thin in rose gold and he's even considering maybe buying it brand new and uh i gotta say there's a yeah i can see by doing that the jager la culture very cleverly it's in it's in Ro it's in rose gold and it's a dress watch but it's also it fills the genre of the the uh, the GMT equation, the duo two time zone piece, is such a such an elegant solution to his GMT solution. So that one watch is really filling two genres. It's filling the dress watch genre and the travel uh, two time zone type piece. So I I gotta say, Greg, I I I think it's I think a bit of selective culling is okay. And uh, as I said to Greg, I said, Greg, you know, when I got my first white gold Patek, the uh, the 5107, I actually sold pieces off. I had a small inheritance, but I even sold most of my collection off. I sold off my, uh, my Omega Speedy. That's the first one I had. I sold off my Breitling Navi Timer, and I sold off my two-tone Rolex Datejust with factory diamond dial. I sold them all off to help finance it and uh, you know the good thing is if you buy used I said to Greg you've basically you've enjoyed these other watches at virtually no cost you've, you've enjoyed them you've had them you've savored them they've been part of your life and um, what's wrong with using that money to buy a piece a piece you know just that 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 exit watch and uh, you can always get another another couple of watches down the track, but I mean a rose gold reverso, I think you can't really go wrong off that. That's a sexy, sexy piece. So uh, Greg, I, I think it's okay. Bit of selective culling, that's, that's you know, look, these, these things are expensive. 
solid gold pieces, whether it's a Patek or a Reverso, they're big money things. So uh, I, I kind of, I, I think it's a, it's a great way to go. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you think of selective culling. See you later, fuckers.